Here he is. Oh my goodness. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Hello, this is Sarah Soiled Plant, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am going to be ranking every genus I have in my house. When I was first brainstorming how to do this video, I originally thought I would just rank them from, you know, my favorite to least favorite, but it was really hard and it seemed kind of arbitrary which ones I'd pick over other ones. And I felt like I love them all so much. So, you know, how would I choose one over the other? They're all in my house, so clearly I like them all. But I was like, how can I figure out how to actually rank them. So what I did is I actually gave this a five point system. In this system, I have five different categories and each of the genus I will rank from one to 10 and come up with an average overall and rank them that way. I'd like to say a quick thank you to Ming Z on Instagram for giving me this idea. I loved this idea and I made a note of it a few months ago and just finally got around to actually filming and ranking all of the genus of plants that I own. So thank you very much for that idea. I love it and I hope you like the end result of the video. So to start off, I will talk about the different categories that I ranked each of the genus in. That is a lot of words to say. <laughs> but basically the first one is ease of care. This comes down to just how much day-to-day -day care do each of these plants need? How frequently do you have to water it? It's lighting requirements, it's humidity requirements. Like is the base care for the plant on the scale of like super easy, couldn't kill it if you tried to like insanely hard, it will die even if you give it the right conditions sometimes. So I'm trying to like scale it that way. The next category is growth. Does it grow quickly? When it grows, does it like spread well? Does it scale up and sort of reproduce itself easily? I basically want to account for how quickly it reproduces, how quickly it grows, so that you can either make more plants or, you know, something along those lines. The next category I have is reliability. Now for this, I kind of wanted a category where I talked about how easy the plants were to propagate. You know, if the plant decides that it no longer wants to be on this mortal plane anymore and decides to start dying on you, how easy is it to revive it and for you to have it save itself? What is the likelihood of the plant dying and just how hardy is the plant generally speaking? The fourth category I have is just general appearance, the look of the leaves themselves, is there a lot of variety in colors? Is there a variety in patterns, in leaf shape, in texture? You know, appearance, I'm trying to narrow it down to just the leaf itself, not really the growth pattern because the growth pattern goes into the growth category. The last category I have is satisfaction. This one's definitely the most subjective of all the groups. I mean, they're all subjective. I'm the one ranking them, but this one is just straight up like, what is my personal feeling growing these plants. How much, if this plant does well, if it gets big, if it reproduces well, if I get it to where it's like super, super happy, how much satisfaction does a happy plant give me? That's kind of the sort of like it factor for the plant itself. And I'll break down each of the plant genus, genuses, I don't even know the right way to pluralize that, but I will break it down for each of these categories and then give you the average score taking all of these points and weighing them out equally. So I do have my computer just off screen here and I have all of my rankings in the nice little chart format. And then I have them averaged out and then ranked from worst to best. So that's the way I'm going to go about it is I'm gonna start with the worst one, worst one. Keep in mind, these are all plants that I own at least one of currently. But at the same time, when I did these rankings, I was taking into account plants I've lost along the way. In the case of a tie, I'm gonna have my satisfaction number be the tie-breaking vote. Everything in this list is arbitrary. And like I said before, all these plants, I love them to death. It's just, I have to put them somewhere on this list. Hey. I should also mention, I have 15 different plant genus in my home, different types of plants. So I'm going to be ranking them one through 15. <laughs> 
So the first plant on this list and therefore the last one on my rankings is Aglianema. Full disclosure about my opinion on Aglianema is I have only two currently and one of them is about to bite the dust and I am this close to just throwing it directly in the trash. For someone like me who is obsessed with Calatheas and Alocasias, you would think that I could very easily keep an Aglianema alive, you can find them everywhere, but ease of care for me is very low. I actually ranked ease of care a three because to me it needs to be watered pretty frequently and it needs higher light than I think a lot of people realize. I was trying to give it medium, in, like bright indirect light, was losing a lot of the color it had, it was losing leaves, it was dropping leaves really fast. So I think they can get really big and beautiful if you're willing to water them really, really frequently and they do like drying out in between. So you can't even keep it wet like you can with a peace lily or with a calathea. So they do really, really like to dry out. And if you keep them too moist, they also die back. So just ease of care for me was a three on that one. For growth, I do think they do grow really easily. And when I have a plant that is dying back and doing terrible, it's still putting off new leaves. It's just dropping three leaves for every two leaves it grows. So for growth, I actually gave it a six. It's right in the middle. I also do like the growth pattern on it. It gets kind of like bushy and whatnot. So for me, it's a six. Reliability, I gave it a five because it's pretty much hit or miss whether it does well or not. I have one Aglianema that's doing okay. And then I have another one that's doing pretty bad. But I do think that's a special circumstance to me. I feel like most people love Aglianema and do just fine with them and they're an easy care plant just for me. I don't think they work very well in my home so I put it right in the middle because I couldn't really decide if I should take my experience versus standard experience for that one so five. And then appearance I actually gave this a four while it comes in a lot of really really beautiful colors generally speaking the leaf shape and the kind of way the whole plant works, cat. It doesn't change shape or have slits or holes or anything like that. All Aglianema leaves kind of look the same. The only variation in it is color, so I gave it a four. That means my overall ranking averaged out is a 4.0 and the lowest one on this list. <laughs> Number 14 on my list is actually the orchids I have, or orchid ACA. I have no clue how to pronounce that, but the orchid variety. The only orchids I have are two different jewel orchids, and that's my only experience with orchids. So take this with a massive grain of salt. For ease of care, I gave it a three. It does have pretty strict light and humidity requirements, at least for the jewel orchids I have. Also, you have to be very particular about watering. You have to put them in special pots. I gave them a three because that seemed fair to me. For growth, I gave it a four. They're kind of hit or miss whether they put off flowers. It's hard to kind of get the settings right, as it were, to get the growth to work. But when it does grow, it does look very nice. I do like how the new leaves come out, things like that. So it, I gave it a four. For reliability, I gave it a four. It's, you know, I haven't killed one yet, so I'm not sure how easy it is to revive. I do know that with the one jewel orchid I have, the Lucidia Discolor, um, it is pretty easy to propagate and it is pretty easy to grow. Oh, I always forget the name of this. It's like pet Petola, Petiolo, Petola. That one isn't doing that great and it's lost a lot of leaves. So I kind of split the difference between like, eh, it's an okay grower and then eh, it's not a okay grower. And I gave it a four. For appearance, I gave this a six and that is mainly because I only have jewel orchids. So the leaves are actually really beautiful. They've got beautiful iridescence to the leaves and they have beautiful patterns, beautiful colors. The shapes are a little bit different, but also they're small. I gave it fewer points for that just cause you know, there's not a lot to see there. So I just gave it a six. And then satisfaction of growing. I haven't been growing mine for very long, but I do really like the way they look. So this one's basically middle of the road for me. I gave it a five. So I gave that an overall ranking of 4.4. And I already broke my own rules because I just looked at my list and jewel orchids were, my jewel orchids were supposed to be 13th and 14 is actually uh, Dracaena slash Sansevieria. Sansevieria were recategorized as Dracaena. And I did have a Dracaena in the past, but I no longer have it because it got spider mites and died. So for me, Dracaena slash Sansevieria is 
going to heavily weigh on the Sansevieria side of things. So ease of care, I gave this an eight. They can get fungus, and if you water it a little bit too much or a little bit too often, they can get really spongy and just kind of fall over and die. So it's not a foolproof plant, but they are very easy to take care of as long as you kind of ignore them a little bit. Doesn't have very extensive light requirements. So I gave it an eight. For growth, I gave it a four because it does grow and it does grow fairly reliably, but it grows really slow. So I give this one a four. Reliability, I gave it a seven because they are pretty easy to propagate. At least the method to propagate them is very easy. It takes a long time to propagate them though. And the one propagation I had was an utter failure. So as far as like hard to kill, very hard to kill. Obviously Sansevier are kind of known to be the hard to kill plants. And propagation itself is really easy. It's just a pain in the butt and takes forever. So I gave this a seven. For appearance, I gave it a two. There's not a ton of variety in Sansevieria. Like I said, I'm weighing heavily on Sansevieria, not Dracaena in this case, because that's all I have. But it's like, okay, you have a Sansevieria. What type would you like? Green? Green on green, lighter green, slightly darker green, or green with some other green, or solid green. Like, there's not a ton of difference. You know, you, ha you have your whale fins and stuff like that, which do make them feel special, but really it's just a normal Sansevieria, just lighter. So I gave this one a pretty low score just because there's a lack of variety in Sansevieria, even though I love the way they look. So I only gave this a two. Then for satisfaction, I actually gave this one a one, not because I hate them and not because I don't love having them, but mostly because it, anyone could have a Sansevieria and have it do well. So when it comes down to it, it's not very satisfying to have this plant in your house because it's like, it fills up space. It's one of those types of plants. I had to be a little cutthroat on some of these rankings in order to differentiate some of the really good ones from the really bad ones, even though they're not really bad. So you'll see a few ones and tens and things like that in here, but don't take that to mean I hate these plants. I love Sansevieria, but these unfortunately in my plants ended up being ranked 14 out of 15. <laughs> Coming in at number 12, we have ZZs, or I actually realize I've never said this word out loud, Zami, Zamioculus, Zamiocolcus, Zamiocolcus, Zamiocolus. Anyway, ZZs, and the only ZZ plant that I have is the standard issue ZZ plant. I don't have the little one, the raven, the variegated, I just have a standard ZZ plant. This one goes along with the snake plants and the san like Sansevierias. This plant ranks slightly higher than Sansevierias, mainly because for ease of care, I actually gave this one a nine. This one does not seem to have the same issues with like fungus and rotting the way that my snake plants do. I have had way more issues with kind of the fungus that kind of makes the whole leaf stalk squishy. I don't have that with my ZZ plant. I've lost a few sections of my ZZ plant, but it doesn't seem to be a chronic thing. It's just kind of like, eh, I don't want this one anymore and it'll drop it. But as far as light goes and watering goes, it's all the same as the Sansevieria category. I just think it's a little bit better because of the lack of fungus issue, at least with mine. So I gave this one a nine. For the growth, I actually rank this one a three because it does grow kind of slowly. And also it tends to like, not stand up straight. I know I've complained about this before that I wish my ZZ plant was a little bit more upright, but it seems like it's just kind of like splaying wherever it feels like it. And it's kind of hard to design around and keep it away from my cats. So I ranked that one a three. When it comes to reliability, I gave this one an eight. They're way easier to propagate than the snake plant. And also they're hard to kill. So I ranked this one like one step higher than your Sansevierias, but overall very reliable plants. So I ranked it an eight. For appearance, I gave it a two. There's not a ton of variety in this species, genus, what have you. You know, you have ones that are dark, you have ones that are variegated, and then you have a small one, and then you have green. Like it's, but all the leaves and the look of it is generally the same. So not a ton of variety, so I gave this one a two. And satisfaction, things, same thing with the Sansevieria, I gave it a one. It's a filler plant. It's a wonderful filler plant. I love it. I would never give mine up for the life of me, but at the end of the day, it is kind of a filler plant. So I gave this one a one in satisfaction. That gives Easy Plants an overall score of a 4.6. <laughs> 
Number 11 on my list, and I know this one is going to piss a lot of people off. My apologies ahead of time. It's Hoya. Before you kill me, let me go through my rankings and maybe you'll understand a little bit where I'm coming from. I do have three Hoya to base my experience off of and I've killed a few in the past. Hopefully I can shed some light onto why I haven't caught the Hoya bug quite yet. Ease of care, I gave this one a six. It is actually pretty difficult for me to tell when it needs water, but it do I have had some do really well and some do not as well. Certain types, it's a little bit easier to tell when it needs water versus others. If you wait until it wrinkles before you water it, I tend to get more problems that way. So it's pretty hard for me to tell when you need to water. Light requirements are okay, but overall I gave this one a six. For growth, Hoyas for me grow so insanely slow. But I do like the growth pattern. I like that they can be kind of hanging plants. I like you can put them on trellises. I like that they put out peduncles and things like that. Haven't had any yet, of course, but that's because I'm not super great at taking care of Hoya yet. So overall for growth, I gave this one a four. For reliability, I gave this one a five, sort of right down the middle. I haven't tried propagating them myself, but I know other people propagate them with good success. And generally speaking, if your care is like close enough to what the standard for what a Hoya really wants, it's not insanely picky as long as you're kind of within a range. I thought a five was pretty fair. For appearance, I actually gave this one a four. I know that there's a million and a half different varieties of Hoya, but I'm gonna tell you a little secret right now. I think 90% of them all look the same. You know, you've got your Compacta, which is super cool. I had one of those, it got mealybugs and died. I don't think I was watering it the correct amount either. So just the combination of those two things, it just, up and died on me. But I've watched Hoya collection videos and while it's kind of nice to see a bunch of different varieties of Hoya, so many of them look very very similar. And then they've got the little silver smatter on there in a certain way and oh there's iridescence if you look at it. It's like yeah okay but like how is that different? I don't know. I don't quite get the hype for some of the super rare Hoyas because they look so similar to ones that you can find easily and grow just as well and all of that kind of stuff. The one thing I will say on behalf of Hoyas is that it seems like no matter what type of Hoya you have, if you give them the exact same care, they generally do okay. There's not like a ton of variation from Hoya to Hoya as far as like keeping them alive goes. So I'll give them that. For satisfaction, because they grow so slowly and because I haven't had the best of luck with them, I gave Hoya a four. I know I'm pretty alone in my opinion on Hoya and I'm okay with that. I might still catch the Hoya bug depending on what ones I see. My overall score for Hoya comes to a 4.6. Number 10 on my list is Ficus. I only have one ficus at the moment and that's my Taniki. I've had a rubber plant in the past, but my experience with ficus is very limited. But for ease of care, I gave this one a five. It's kind of like a Sansevieria or a ZZ plant where they can go a while without having too much water, but at the same time, if you do underwater it, it's way more likely to drop leaves and get upset at you. Also, it needs a lot of good light from my experience. I've given my Taniki the best spot in the house and it's doing well, but I honestly feel like if I put it anywhere else, it would get so mad at me and just start losing leaves like crazy. So I gave this one a five because once you get it, it's easy to take care of them, but the requirements are a little steep. Next for growth, I gave this one a five. If you do give it the right conditions, it does grow very well and I haven't had much of an issue. I did have my old burgundy rubber plant didn't grow at all, and that's because I wasn't giving it enough light, but it also sustained itself. So for growth, I just put this in the middle, gave it a five. For reliability, I gave this a four. It is fairly easy to propagate. It does pretty well. It is kind of hard to kill, because if, like I said before, if you don't give it enough light, it will just kind of sustain itself. There's a standard, rubber tree like just the green one at my work and i swear no one waters that plant except for me it's in like the tiniest pot in the world it's getting like no light and it's still alive somehow so i put these in like the hard to kill category as long as you're doing the bare minimum for it so i gave this one a six for appearance i gave this a four because you can have like fiddly figs which i think are ficus right 
And then you have ficus triangularis, and there's some cooler ficus out there with variegation, and the tanicki's beautiful, the ruby's beautiful. So for appearance, I gave this one a four, mainly because the leaf shape does, does vary a little bit, and the colors vary a little bit, but at the same time, you can spot a ficus a mile away just because of what the leaves look like and how it grows. So it's a little too predictable, so I gave this one a four. For satisfaction, I gave ficus a four, mainly because it's beautiful when it does really well, but at the same time, having one growing and not killing it doesn't give you a ton of like pride points, at least for me, it doesn't give me a lot of like, doesn't boost my ego. I'm not like, yeah, we did it, it's great. Like, it, it's, it's fine, it's a four. That gives Ficus an overall score of a 4.8. <laughs> Ranked ninth on my list is Anthurium. I only have one Anthurium, and boy is she a diva. She has given me so many problems. How did this genus get ranked ninth? Well, I'll go through the list. We'll go through it together. I only have one Anthurium, so for the ease of care, I gave this a one. I have not killed mine yet, and I am going determined not to kill this plant, but it has lost every single leaf it has. I am giving it perfect light. I am giving it 70 plus humidity. I am giving it plenty of water, all of that stuff. I'm following everything to the letter and it is still dying on me. I am so mad at this plant. Like I want it to live. I love it. And it's not dead yet. It's just, just starting to grow the first leaf, but it's going to be like this big when all the previous leaves were like this big. So yeah, definitely ease of care, one. Pfft, terrible. For growth, I'm gonna give this a three just because in theory, it should be able to grow and do well. Its growth patterns are pretty cool depending on what Ethereum you have. I love the growth pattern on the one I have, which is the Vitarifolium, but overall it's not growing very fast and it's not growing very well, so I did give this one a three. For reliability, gave it a three, because like I said, it's dying back on me and it's not doing great, but it also isn't dead and it is putting off new growth even if it's tiny. I gave it a three. For appearance, I gave this one a seven just because there is a vast variety of Anthurium. You can go to your more shield style, like your Crystallinums and stuff, and they're big and beautiful. They can be velvety, they can be shiny, and then I've got my Vitarifolium, which is like a long dangly whatever. So I gave this one a seven. For satisfaction, I gave this one a 10. Because honestly, if I could get an Anthurium to grow well, I think I would be so incredibly smug. Like, just imagine walking around being like, oh, that's nice, you have a snake plant. Oh, that's nice, you have a pothos. I've got a bunch of Anthuriums I haven't killed. Just imagine. Someday that'll be me. Someday I'll be as smug as somebody who can grow Anthurium. But at this point, not happening. But satisfaction if it does well, 10. Overall score for Anthurium is 4.8. <laughs> All right, we're getting past the five point mark. We're getting past that 50% hurdle. And that is number eight, which is Sterlitzia, or my bird of paradise. I only have one, and then I've killed another one. Keep that in mind. For ease of care, I gave this one a seven. Basically, you wanna give it as much light as humanly possible, and then it takes water, you know, kinda whenever you give it to it. I've gone stretches without giving it water. I've given it stretches where I give it too much, and it generally does okay no matter what I do to it. It hasn't gotten root rot or anything like that. So ease of care, I definitely say the hardest thing to hit is probably your light. It doesn't need high humidity or anything like that. So I would give this one a seven. For growth, I'll give it a five because I do like the growth pattern where it comes out of the stalks and it's very, you know, pre it's very presentable. It doesn't grow incredibly fast, but they also tend to get really big. So if it did grow fast and big, that would like not be good as a house plant because you'd outgrow your house too fast. So generally speaking, I gave it a five. If this, if Birds of Paradise were like 
itty bitty and growing this slow, I'd probably have a problem with it, but because they're generally bigger plants, I like the style of growth it has. So I gave it a five. For reliability, I gave it a five. Um, they can get pests pretty easily and die back. They would be pretty hard to propagate, at least at home. So reliability, I just gave it a five because generally speaking, it doesn't die unless it gets bugs. If you had to propagate it, I honestly feel like that would be a huge pain in the ass. But overall, I'd give it a five. For appearance, I gave this a four, mainly because it doesn't come in a ton of color varieties. It doesn't come in a ton of leaf shapes and things like that but they are really big and beautiful leaves. You know, I gave it a four, which is the same ranking I gave Hoya and Ficus and my Aglianema, which seems like cheating, but you know what? That's what I felt when I made these rankings. So I gave it a four. For satisfaction, I ranked Sterilitia a six because I really like having them and they do give me a sense of pride in the fact that like it makes my home look good, but it's not like pride as in like, yeah, I managed to like take care of a bird of paradise. You know, so I figured a six is fair. Overall score for Sterilitia is a 5.4. The next one on my list, which is number seven, and this hurts my heart, but it is the Maranta Calathea prayer plant category, the Marantisiae family. And honestly, for me, this probably ranks higher than it does for most people, but either way, let's go through the rankings and find out why it's ranked number seven. Ease of care. Not gonna lie, gave them a two. They are incredibly fussy, much like Anthurium, except it seems like once you hit a stride with these, they do much better than my Anthurium does. Much like Anthurium, they have humidity requirements that are a little insane and kind of like watering requirements that are a little insane. The reason I gave this one a two versus the Anthurium giving it a one is because these ones can do much better with lower light than Anthurium can. Anthurium really, really, really need bright-ish indirect light as opposed to, you know, these guys which can handle medium indirect light pretty dang well. But the humidity requirements and all of that, I gave this one a two. For growth, I gave it a four. It does grow pretty well and revive itself pretty well. They're hard to propagate though. You have to propagate by separation versus like chopping and propping like you do with some other plants. But once you kind of get the settings right for these, they do grow like crazy. They'll put off two, three leaves at a time. If you have something like Maranta, they grow really, really easy. Even some of these Calathea and Goperdii, Goperdia? however you say that, they also grow pretty readily and can shoot off a couple leaves at a time. So I gave it a four. For reliability, definitely a low score. I gave them a three just because of their humidity requirements and susceptibility to bugs. Now, if you care for those things, they can be reliable, but who am I kidding? They are so horrible to take care of some of the time. So I gave this one a three. At this point, you're like, Sarah, their scores are terrible. How in the world did this get ranked higher than some of these other ones when these initial scores are so bad? And like a hurricane, here comes category four, appearance. Appearance, I gave these a 10 out of 10. You have velvety leaves, smooth leaves, ridged leaves. You have all these different cool patterns. You have the backs of the leaves that can be different colors. They can be white, they can have red, they can have purple, they can have different color greens, they can have silvers. I just honestly think as far as leaves go, I mean, I think these are by far, in my opinion, some of the most beautiful leaves on the planet, which is why I struggle so much in order to give them the best opportunity to live. They are some of my favorite plants just because they are so gosh darn pretty. So 10 out of 10 on appearance. And category five, satisfaction. I also gave these a 10 out of 10. Being able to take care of Calathea just makes you feel like you are superhuman. You know, I am out there saving the plant world one Calathea at a time. Granted, it's only the beginning of February, but I have not killed any of my Calathea over winter knock on wood. And trust me, that makes me feel so amazing that I haven't killed any. So satisfaction, 10 out of 10, when you happen to hit the stride. Overall, that gives my Calatheas a overall score of a 5.8. Next is number six on this list, which is Monstera. Ease of care, I gave Monstera a six. 
you know, your deliciosas are super easy to take care of, wonderful plants. My adansonii has been a little bit harder to take care of. And then I also have Standaliana and Peru, and those have been a pain in my rear end. They are terrible. But you know what? I know that other people manage to do very well with those and don't screw those up the way I do. So I think that's a me problem and not a Monstera problem, but I still wanted to dock it a couple of points because they are making me mad. Seriously, my Standaliana and Peru are some of my least favorite plants just because I can't figure them out. So I'm gonna give Ease of Care a six, which honestly to me seems a little generous, but it got boosted way up because of how awesome and easy to take care of the Deliciosas are, honestly. For growth, I actually gave this one a seven. I think when I was filling this out, I was being extremely generous with this, but I do like the growth pattern when they do grow. Once you get the care set, they do grow very quickly. And also I've been able to cut down things back to the stump and then they grow back just fine. Overall for growth, I gave it a seven. As I'm sitting here, I think that's a little generous, but we'll just go with it. I gave it a seven. For reliability, I gave them a six. Even though most of my Monsteras have given me problems, I've still been able to keep them alive for the most part. My Standaliana, still not dead, actually produced a single leaf. It's like this big, but it actually produced a leaf for me. So haven't killed it yet, even though it's been trying to die for seemingly forever. Also, Monstera are super easy to propagate. Cut them up into nodes, stick them in moss, stick them in, you know, cut the top off of a Deliciosa, stick it in water, what have you. They're super easy to propagate. So for reliability, I gave them a six because yes, mine are dying, but also they're able to be revived if push comes to shove. For appearance, I gave these a seven. There is a good variety in colors. Obviously you've got your Deliciosa, and then you've got your Albo variety, your Aurea variety, and your Thai Constellation varieties. So there is like a cool mix of colors that you can get with Monstera. The Adansonii is super stunning, super unique. There's not really any other plant I can think of that even looks like it. So you get bonus points for that. Monsteras have those beautiful slats in it and the holes. And then you've got things like the Peru, which have that like ridgy effect. They're super cool. So overall for appearance, I gave Monsteras a seven. Then for satisfaction, I actually ended up being about in the middle. I love growing them. I love having them, but at the same time, like it doesn't give me like insane pride for having taken care of them. So I gave this one a five, just like right in the middle. So that gives us an overall score of a 6.2. Point two. Top five, here we go. All right, mm, okay. Number five is Alocasia. Now I love my Alocasia. For ease of care, I actually gave these a five. They do require a little bit higher humidity, a little bit more particular light, but it's not an insane amount like it is with, you know, Calatheas and their humidity or ficus and their light, how they need a ton of it. Alocasia are particular, but it's not hard to get those particular settings right. You know, watering is pretty okay with them. They're a little harder than like a philodendron or a monstera, but they're not insane. So overall for ease of care, I gave them a five. For growth, I also gave them a five. Basically, it's another one of those where if you get the settings right, they grow. But generally speaking, you lose leaves frequently. It's like a 50-50. You can either get the settings right and have it blow up into a big plant or it can like lose a leaf, gain a leaf, lose a leaf, gain a leaf. So I gave this one about a five. For reliability, because of the losing leaves frequently and things like that, if you get the settings wrong, I actually gave this one a four, but it is still hard to kill them. It's not like a Calathea where if you get the settings wrong, they will disintegrate to nothing and you have to start from scratch. Alocasia aren't quite that bad. You can usually catch them before they get too bad. So I gave them a four. For appearance, much like Calathea, I gave them a 10 out of 10. I love the way they look. They come in a bunch of cool varieties. They have be beautiful striking features. So overall, 10 out of 10, love them, stunning amazing plants. And for satisfaction, I gave these an eight. Definitely love that they can be beautiful and grow well and love the way they look. The negative that kind of docked it a few points for me is that they generally stay pretty small. It's hard to get them really big and 
you know, impressive specimen. They kind of always stay a little on the small side. At least I haven't seen any big, huge ones. Who knows? It might be possible. But for me, because they're always so small, it gave them an eight. That gives allocation an overall score of 6.4. <laughs> Ash came back because he's very excited about plant genus number four, which is Caropegia? Caropegia? I don't know how to pronounce that one, but basically my string of hearts. The ranking on this one actually surprised me because I'm having a bunch of issues with my string of hearts, but let's see how the numbers broke down. Ease of care, I gave this one a four because honestly, I am still struggling to get the watering right. And so that docked it a bunch of points. I pretty much figured out the lighting requirements. It doesn't necessarily need high humidity or anything like that. It's just the watering is pretty tricky. So overall, I gave this one a four. For growth, I actually gave this one an eight. I love the way they trail and the hanging of the string of hearts. I love the little heart-shaped leaves. And despite me struggling with string of hearts, I've been able to propagate it like crazy. These are some of the easiest plants to propagate and they grow so incredibly fast when you do have like some of the settings right for these plants and some of the care right for these plants, they grow like a weed. They grow so fast. So for reliability, I gave them a six, mainly because of how the propagation works and how easy it is to propagate. I've actually technically got three string of hearts plants right now because I'm trying to propagate them and have them like grow and succeed and be big and beautiful like when I first bought them and almost killed them. The main reason they've been docked points at all, considering how easy they are to propagate, they keep dying back on me, but they don't ever die. It's like a weird, like, never doing great, never doing bad, but I'm gonna propagate like crazy, so I gave it a six. As for appearance, this is kind of a cop-out. You know, you have your variegated string of hearts and you have your string of turtles, so there's not a ton of variety there, but honestly, they nailed it. I feel like everyone wants the kind of string of hearts that crazy plant guy has, right? And that goes into satisfaction. I gave this one a seven, basically because like, if I can finally get this one to grow, I'll be really happy, but I know it's like just a me problem and I feel like most people do really well with string of hearts. So, but just like personal satisfaction for finally figuring it out, I gave it a seven. And that gives an overall score for my Carapigia a 6.6 which is pretty darn good for a plant that I keep killing. We are in the top three. So the bronze medal number three goes to Pothos slash Epipremnum slash Scandapsis. Ease of care, I gave these a nine. I mean, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Pothos and all of its varieties are very well known for being hard to kill. You can kind of overwater it and not kill it, underwater it and not kill it. They're very, very, very resilient plants. So why did I dock at a point? My Cebu Blue. My Cebu Blue has been very hard to take care of and get the watering just right. For just that reason alone, I docked it a point to give it a nine. For growth, I also gave this a nine just because they do kind of grow like crazy and they do all the vining stuff and I love the way it grows. And it's just generally speaking, very quick to grow. So even my Cebu Blue, who's having a little bit of issues, they grow like crazy. And over the two years I've had it, I've taken cuttings probably seven times. They grow super fast. All of, the, all of them grow super fast. And you know a girl loves her vining plants. Gave it a nine. For reliability, I gave them a 10. 10 out of 10, tens across the board. Yeah, reliability, definitely gave these a 10. Super easy to propagate, super easy to reproduce. They hardly ever die. They're very much on the hard to kill plant variety. So definitely 10 out of 10. It's just very forgiving when you happen to mess up once or twice. For appearance, I actually gave them a four. You do have a lot of variety in terms of like, you have your neon pothos, skindapsis. You can get like, skindapsis all kind of look the same to me, but you do have like the dark form tribui, tribii version but like generally speaking you're going from like greens to whites and you know just in between there's not a whole lot of like reds and pinks in there and a lot of the leaf shapes do look almost exactly the same so I gave this one a four then satisfaction of owning I gave these a two you can find them ev everywhere they're super common so there's not a ton of like yay I did it when you're growing pothos but at the same time they're a wonderful plant to have in your home. They're great as far as like having a plant that's not insanely hard to take care of like my Calathea are. So I gave this one a two. Overall score for 
Mypothos, Epipremnum, Scandapsis category is a 6.8. Why are you so obsessed with getting on the table? What is, what, what's different now? My silver medal number two on this list is going to be Syngonium. Now, ease of care for Syngonium, I gave these a nine. These are very much similar to your Pothos varieties where they are hard to kill, they can vine, they can kind of get bushy if you want them bushy, they can grow up in a trellis, and generally speaking, do not need insane light requirements or special watering schedules and moisture levels. You can let them dry out and they don't need a ton of humidity either. So I gave these ones a nine. Sorry about that, I was losing light there, so I didn't want this to be like pitch black by the end of this video. But anyway, Syngonium Ease of Care gave them a nine. So now moving on to growth, I actually gave them a seven. They do grow pretty easily. Um, they're a little more finicky than Pothos and things like that. It's very much on the same level as a Monstera. They can either grow super well or they kind of sustain themselves. They can handle wilting and things like that. Yeah, generally speaking, gave them a seven. That seemed like a fair number. Next, we have reliability. I gave them an eight. They are very easy to propagate, especially if they're in the vining stage. You can just cut them up like you would a pothos. Also, they are very hard to kill. They can handle underwatering pretty easily. They don't need a ton of humidity and things like that. And it's hard to kill them. I haven't killed a single Syngonium yet. So that's a good sign, I think. So reliability, I gave them an eight. Next we have appearance. The Syngoniums, generally speaking, are the same shape. You do have a couple more like this one here that's a little more spadey. You do have some that are more spade shape rather than arrowhead shape. And they do come in a good variety of colors, you know, obviously different color greens, but it comes with white, it comes with pinks and you know, different stuff like that. They have like speckles or splotches. So there's a decent amount of variety, but they are pretty much the same like couple of shapes. So I gave this one a six out of 10. For satisfaction, I gave Syngoniums a five. There are several that I really, really enjoy taking care of. And I do like the different colors and things like that. I don't know, in, in my gut, I felt like satisfaction for Syngonium should be a five. That gives them an overall score of 7.0. Last but very not least, I'm sure all of you know which one gets the gold medal number one. Out of all of these rankings of all of my genus, which one is going to come out on top? And it is philodendron. Ease of care for philodendron, I gave them eights. Generally speaking, they don't need a ton of light, ton of humidity, or regular frequent waterings. They're very accommodating to a bunch of different environments. So generally speaking, gave them an eight. For growth, I gave them a seven. I've had very good luck with most of my philodendrons and getting them to grow. It's just the idea of getting them to grow bigger and fuller is kind of difficult. So I docked a few points for that, but generally speaking, the growth and growth pattern is very good and there's a lot of variety there. So for growth, I gave them a seven. Reliability, I gave them an eight. And most of this is because even if you are struggling with that plant and it starts to die back. They are very, very easy to revive. They're easy to take pieces off of and replicate. Like my philodendron varicosum was doing terrible. So what I did is I chopped it into a bunch of pieces and tried to have it revive a couple of different ways. And the stump that I cut back is already growing back and already has a beautiful new leaf on it. It actually got two leaves on it since I cut it off in October. The stem cutting that I took is starting to produce leaves and the top cutting is not dead. The top cutting's not doing great, but it's not dead yet. Of all these different ways of sort of propagating and forcing new growth, it succeeded or did okay in all of these categories. So definitely reliability, gave it an eight. For appearance, I gave philodendrons a seven. There are a million and a half types of philodendrons and I feel like there is so much variety in leaf shape alone that they earned this seven out of 10 score just for the amount of leaf shapes you can have. You do have some that have cool backs to the leaves. You have fuzzy petioles, you have fuzzy, you have glossy, you have matte leaves. You know, there's just a ton of variety in philodendrons that you can kind of, whatever your shtick is, you can find a philodendron that fits that shtick. Part of me thinks this should be an eight, but it's already at the top anyway, so I'll leave it at a seven. Last but not least, I put satisfaction being a seven. 
mainly because philodendrons, while easy to take care of, they also can get really big. They can get beautiful. There's so many varieties of them. And you can get like extremely rare up to like super, super common. But overall, like some of my favorite plants to grow and some of the most satisfying plants I've grown, like individual plants, alocasia and calathea are up there, but philodendrons are up there too. I gave this one a seven on satisfaction, but you do always have those super basic ones that don't really satisfy you much at all growing them, at least in my case. I've actually personally had a harder time with the basic philodendrons than I do with the more crazy expensive like fancy ones so who knows but overall i gave satisfaction a seven so that gives philodendron an overall score of 7.4 so now i'll show i'll put a quick list somewhere over here showing you all of the scores and all of the rankings just in one spot so you can look at it hopefully this wasn't too involved hopefully it wasn't too insanely long i have a feeling this is going to be one of my longer videos just because I feel the need to like justify every ranking I ever have for all these plants. And like I said at the beginning of the video and kind of throughout, I do love every single one of these plants. When I rank things a one, when I rank them a two, that doesn't mean I hate them. It just means in the grand scheme of things, these are the worst in this one category, even though I still love having these plants, you know, you got to rank some tens and some ones. It's just, that's how it goes. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, like give yourself a pat on the back. You've got more stamina than I do, honestly. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.